today we want to talk a little bit about how you can use LinkedIn to network, to find relationships, to tell everyone how great you are, and generally to strengthen your organization. And to do that, we brought in a guest expert. Lynn Williams is the executive director of the Great Careers Groups, which provides career education and networking. Lynn is also an experienced and delightful LinkedIn expert and trainer. Did you know that Great Careers Groups was actually listed number one on the Philadelphia Business Journal's Business Networking Association in December of 2020 and 2021? So two years running, they said, if you live in Philly, this is what you need to be part of. I think we're going to get some of that goodness here today as well. So ladies and gentlemen, sit back and let's get power connected with Lynn Williams. Thank you so much for having me here today. I am delighted to be representing Pennsylvania. I actually married a Canadian and we were part of Vancouver for the Expo 86. And that white building that has like the trampoline white tent the uh, roof, I actually jumped on the top of that. I kid you not. That was part of a package that I won back in 86. So those are my fond memories of Vancouver. So I'm going to share my deck here, and I'm going to also give put that in the chat. So it's the very last link for the deck. It's just simply bit.ly, the bit.ly link, and it's all lowercase TechSoup LI for LinkedIn. Like how simple is that? So here we go. Let me share just the window. All right. <clears throat> now there's lots of links that are embedded in this deck, which is why I have given you the link to the deck so that you can keep on learning. We only have an hour here today. And as a nonprofit leader, I have to tell you, I am absolutely a fangirl of TechSoup. So I'm so happy to be here sharing some tips on LinkedIn with you. So let me make this bigger. I'll make this a slideshow here. I won't be able to see the chat. So Eli, I'm going to, or Ben, I'm rely on you to moderate the chat for me. Okay. So here's my caveat. We only have an hour. I could only cover so much in an hour. So I'm going to go into warp speed mode and cover lots of different topics that I think will be valuable to you. First, we're going to talk about your personal profile. You need to customize your LinkedIn URL. You need to have a custom banner and you might want to try a different profile pic. So let's see what that looks like. Let's go into LinkedIn. I'll do these in little batches. So real quick, you're going to go to your profile on the left. And when that becomes big, up here at the top right, it says edit your public profile URL. When you click on that, if you've got a bunch of gobbledygook and uh, numbers and letters, you need to change that right here up at the top and just put your name or first name, last name, or if you have to, you might need to put a middle initial or middle name in it. But please customize your URL so that you're easy to find on LinkedIn. Next thing is the custom banner. So as you can see, I have made a custom banner and I made mine in a program called canva.com. And canva.com is absolutely free for a 501c3 nonprofits. And you actually get a platform where you can invite 10 team members. So I put the link to Canva. Uh, dot com right here in number two. Now there's something called PFP Maker. So if I go to pfpmaker.com, oops, I didn't spell that. There we go. You can drag and drop a picture in the middle of PFP Maker. And let's see if I can pull something up from my desktop real quick. Here's my picture. And hopefully it'll drag and drop okay or not. I got some beach ball spinning. It is summer, it's summer solstice. So I have a Mac, so I get the spinning beach balls here. I think I did it too fast. I wanted to drag and drop it. So I'm just going to talk a little bit. Here it is. Now we got it. 
So here's my picture. And what it's going to do is it's going to change backgrounds. So maybe you have a picture on your LinkedIn profile that has like an open door and a plant and a shelf or something like that. And you need to get rid of that background and make something a little bit more zippy. This program, excuse me, allows you to change up that background photo. Now, if you are a nonprofit and you have a logo and you have a specific brand, you can go into this little drop here and you could click on RGB and you could put in your hex colors right in there. So you can customize it for your particular brand. Now, simple to download. You just click on the one you want to download and you download it and that's it. Next thing is your headline. Your headline can be 220 characters. You not only want to have keywords, but you want to have something a little spicy in there, something that'll give it a little sizzle. You don't need to put your nonprofit name in there because most likely the nonprofit that you work for will be right up here <clears throat> at the top if you've named that as the first thing. Now, mine is down at the second thing, which is right here, executive director, but I could easily move that to first place. It's whatever you want to be up at the top. So what do I mean by adding a little sizzle? So here's an article. If I go to this, click on this link, this is gonna take me to a LinkedIn article that I wrote. It's how to write good headlines for LinkedIn articles. But there's some secret sauce down here at the bottom of the article. And I love this thing called share through. What I did is I put my headline into share through and I got a 68 average score, 51 engagement, 82 impression. And then I tweaked the words a little bit and I got a hundred impression. I tweaked the words more and I got another one. So it's just something that you have to play with. So if you are impacting the world with your mission and vision, tell the world what it is that you do and play with this share through headline analyzer. So let's just click on that share through. And then I'm going to go to my current headline and I will just pop it into share through and I'll show you what I mean. So in this case, I have 212 characters out of 220. And when I click on find out, you think of this as a stoplight, green, yellow, and red. So I've got my headline above average. It's green, so that's good. And it gives me some suggestions on how I could make it even more zippy and raise the number. But my engagement score, 51, but I got an impression score of 100. So I really like this tool. I've been using it a lot in the past couple of months with clients and in my LinkedIn workshops, and it's actually been fun. Next couple things are that your contact info, location, and over 500 members. So in your contact info, you definitely want to make sure that you have your phone number and an email at a minimum, but you have an opportunity to put in websites and Twitter handles and all this other stuff. And I even have my Calendly book a call with me in here. Now, you want to have over 500 connections. Why? If you were to Google that, you're going to find out that the algorithm will work more in your favor if you have over 500 connections than if you have less. The other thing was, let's see, oh, contact or a location. So you can see that I have greater Philadelphia area. I live in King of Prussia specifically, and I'm right by the third largest mall in the country, which is the King of Prussia Mall. But I don't want to peg myself in a little hole in a city called King of Prussia. I want to open myself up to the greater Philadelphia area. So make sure you have a major metropolitan area listed. Next, let's talk about your about section. And we're going to talk about Unicode. So in your about section, you can have up to 220, sorry, 2,600 characters. I used to have more paragraphs and I took them out after I got onto Clubhouse 
and I realized people are skimming and scanning. I could give a little introduction, but for the most part, I wanted to do bullet points and just make it easy for people to skim and scan. So I made categories that I put in capital letters. Here's my nonprofit I'm looking for. Fun fact, what I do, core competencies. These are lots of keywords of mine and contact and connect. So the fact that you're not connected to me, you will not see my contact info up top here in my profile until you're a first level connection. So I make it easy for people to connect with me by putting it in the bottom of my about section. And of course, I also have the, the fundraising sponsorship page here available too. So no, it is not hyperlinked on a desktop, but believe it or not, if you have an iPhone, you will see hyperlinks on the iPhone, on the mobile version, but you won't see it on the desktop. Maybe LinkedIn will get there down the road. Now I want to talk about Unicode. So sometimes you're going to see on people's profile, old italics or underline. Guess what? There's lots of tools that do that, and I've listed them in this article here, but I would use it as a minimum or maybe not even use it at all on your LinkedIn profile because it is not readable by LinkedIn. It's not in their database. So you might want to use it for maybe some impact in a post, but I am not a fan of typically using Unicode. Next thing you want to do is you want to embellish your job titles. So what is that? Let's go to LinkedIn. And if you have your real title of what your company gave you, and then you add up to 100 characters, you can get extra keywords in and tell your story a little bit more. And this one, of course, I, I don't have embellished job titles, but I could add other things to these titles. The other thing you want to do is we're going to talk about white space. So if you go down to a job description, for example, and let me go past my entrepreneurial adventures into, okay, here we go. I'll just do the nonprofit one. So if I were to have all my bullet points smashed together, it would look too paragraphy and it would be harder to read. So I like to do a bullet point white space, bullet point white space, and just spread it out a little bit so the human eye can skim and scan it. Next thing is you want to connect your company page for your logo. So if you were to click on this link, it would take you right to how do you make a company page? If you have not made a company page for your nonprofit, we're going to talk a lot more in depth about company pages in just a little bit. <clears throat> so you can see that here's my company page for around the clock. You're just going to see, I don't do anything with it. And the reason being is I'm actually going to kill off this brand that I've had, believe it or not, for 27 years and eight months. Yeah, it is. I've grown above and beyond that and I'm changing and, and evolving. And as soon as I finish my doctoral dissertation, yes, I'm writing my doctoral dissertation on the topic of LinkedIn for job seekers. I have a new brand that I am in process of developing and it will replace this. And so therefore I don't do anything with this company page. You will see activity on the nonprofit company page. I'm more about helping the masses than I am the individuals. So let's just click on that. You can go in and click on somebody's little logo on their page and it will take that, take you to that page. Now you can see we have some red ups and some, or sorry, some red downs and some green ups. And these are the analytics in the past 30 days. But as a super admin or an admin on the page, you will get analytics, which is really nice. And this is free, absolutely free for LinkedIn. Now, <clears throat> up at the top here, it says grow your followers. So we're going to talk about this, but since I'm here, I'm just going to take advantage of this moment. It says invite my connections. Let me see if I can find Eli. Okay, I've already invited him. Here's another Eli. So all I have to do is click on that. 
and invite that one, but I don't want to blast it out there. So now I have 11 of 250 credits available. These reset at the end of each month. So you want to keep inviting people to your company page so that you grow your followers. We now have 3,038 followers. And I believe TechSoup has a company page. So I highly recommend that you follow them also. Anyway, another thing you can, if you have events from your company page, you can schedule them here. And then you want to put ha three hashtags in that are relevant to what it is that you do. And feel free to change them up every once in a while. So if I wanted to change it up and not have career management anymore, I could add a hashtag and I'm going to do, and we'll see how that goes. Okay. And now I've added it. So now my three hashtags are job seeker, open to work and nonprofit. Just got to click save so that it saves those hashtags. Okay. Going back. Uh, also on your profile, I'm going to go to my personal profile and because we will come back to the company page. I'm going to spend a, quite a bit of time on the company page because it's really important to market your nonprofit. But over here on the right, if you have people also viewed, you need to change that to people you may know. Because if you were to come to my page, I don't want you looking at necessarily other nonprofits like me, if there's such a thing. Same thing if you were a job seeker, you don't want people looking at other people that are your competitors, so to speak, other candidates for a same job. So if you go into this little round mini me up at the top here, and this will, got the beach ball going again, go to settings and privacy. This is your dashboard. So this is where you're the pilot on your of your plane and you make all the settings on all the different controls that you have over here on the left so you can set your <clears throat> account preferences your sign-in and security and by the way you should absolutely positively have more than one email address when you log into your linkedin account if you get hacked for some reason or another it is a protection if you don't have the two-factor authentication set up. So it's just a, a good practice. All right. So that people also view. Yes, I forgot to tell you that's where I wanted to go. Let me get rid of that and that. So the people also view, here it is, right here under, under site preferences. So you could see people also viewed. No, I don't want to have the people also viewed. I want it to be people you may know. Next, uh, you want to add media to your profile. So if I were to go to my profile, you're going to see, I'm going to click on the left here, make it big. As soon as the bandwidth catches up here, I'll scroll down. All right. So you can see that I have added media to underneath my last couple jobs. I have a Google Doc. I have a link to a YouTube page. I have a link to a Canva document and other links or PDFs or YouTube links or whatever. <clears throat> this helps give your profile a little pop of color. And you can see here was one interview. Down here was another interview. So people can see how it is that I go about doing public speaking on different platforms. So it's always good to put some kind of documents up here. So if you've made some impact, if you had an event, and as long as if, the, if there's kids involved, as long as there's permissions, photo permissions to release that on social media, then you, know, you can publish different impact of your events. Take advantage of that. Okay, now you also want to get recommendations on LinkedIn. And then we're going to talk about keywords. So recommendations are down at the bottom of the page. And somewhere here, you can see, I think I have, okay, 83 recommendations. 
but you also have to give recommendations. And I'm a little shocked. I have to have the time to do that to writing, but there are people that I definitely want to give recommendations to. I've had some amazing interns that just finished a couple weeks ago. So I want to give them some recommendations. Now we're going to talk about where to put keywords on LinkedIn. So there are five places that I typically target for keywords on LinkedIn. Number one is the headline. So I want people to know that I write ATS friendly resumes and I do LinkedIn for job seekers. That's the for-profit part of me because the girls got to eat. But the nonprofit in me is online career education and a techie boomer cheerleader, so to speak. So I like to cheer on, as a boomer, I like to cheer on people that love tech. I love geeks. Now, <clears throat> the next place you want to have keywords is in your about section. So I have a list of core competencies and they're all in alphabetical order. And I've copied and pasted these from a Word document that has been bullet pointed. <clears throat> if I were to copy and paste it from a Google Doc, the bullet points would be really big and obnoxious and they would not look very nice. So you want to copy and paste from a Word document. And TechSoup does have Word and Microsoft Office products for an absolute steal. As Eli said, ridiculous prices. Yes, I know all about that. Now, if you go down to your job descriptions, remember I said, or the job titles, you can have up to 100 characters. So that's number three, where you want to put keywords. Number four, where you want to put keywords is definitely your skill section. You can have up to 50, so have 50, but you want to look them up. And I'm going to show you a, a little hands-on demo and a little tip as to how you look up those keywords. The last place that I typically try to put keywords <clears throat> is under projects and under publications, which is somewhere. Okay. You'll see it says I have 162 publications. The last one I published was August 15th. So I'm a little bit behind in my data entry. So I'm pushing about 200 publications. I write for four online magazines weekly and they have about 100,000 subscribers. My word gets out there. <clears throat> I also put my blogs on the nonprofit website. And I also write a newsletter for LinkedIn and every week it'll always be in my featured section. So here was last week's newsletter and it's, I have to put content out in my post to post my newsletter. So it's even more writing. How might you describe your hybrid professional identity and unique value? If you click on that, you will see. Here's my newsletter. It's called Career News Today. And you can see I have 4,266 subscribers. If you're going to have a newsletter, if you've got a lot more connections on your personal profile page than on your company page, you definitely want to publish on your personal profile page. And you want to have at least 50, maybe 500 connections on LinkedIn because when you publish your first newsletter, it's going to, LinkedIn algorithm is just going to blast it out to your first level connections. And if they subscribe, then you will have people that will subscribe. And then it happens at a very slow pace after that. So <clears throat> here's my article and you always want to put call to action at the bottom of the article. So here, subscribe to my newsletter. Here's the nonprofit website information. Here's our events, book a call with me, follow this hashtag. And then here's my. So it's always good to get that kind of information in your newsletter. So people know what the next steps are. So toot your horn about your nonprofit. Okay. Now we're going to talk about keywords. So I did put a link in number 16 here 
that will take you to the website. And there's about four articles that I wrote on keywords. A picture's worth a thousand words. So you're going to love this live, live demo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the jobs tab. And I know this is not a nonprofit word exactly precisely, but it's a really good demo word that I like to use. And you'll see what I mean when I do this. So project manager. And let's say I was going to put it in greater Philadelphia area. <clears throat> So now you're going to see there are 19,796 jobs with project manager. What about project management? And I click search again. There's 40,897. Project management is part of what you do. And you're a project manager. Don't you think you should use the word project management in order to get found? Let's take this a step further. Let's go to Google Trends, which is trends.google.com. And what's going to happen is we're going to put project manager in, and then we're going to compare that to project management. And we're going to see what is being searched on Google. You're going to clearly see that LinkedIn and Google mirror each other. Okay. You got something wrong going on in Google here. That's the first time that happened to me. There we go. Okay. The bar chart and the line chart show red. The project management is definitely search for more on Google than it is project manager. Now, this is United States. Let's, I'm going to go with my area, which is greater, oops, Philadelphia. I just want Philadelphia. Okay, so I have the Delaware side of Philadelphia, the New Jersey side of Philadelphia, or I want the Pennsylvania side. Now, this is past 12 months, so it's still true that the red line and the red bar chart is used more and search more than project manager. The past 12 months, actually the past two-ish years, has been weird. It's a weird world out there. So let's just look at the past 90 days. Oh, Google is having an issue here today. It'll pop up. And even in the past 90 days, except for this one little spike right here on June 13th, project manager was searched more than project management. So now I can start this process all over. And let's put, let's put a new word in here. So let's say your title is fundraiser, or maybe it's fundraising. So let's look up fundraising and let's look up fundraiser. So fundraiser is getting more action and looking up on Google than fundraising, but that's the United States. So let's go check out Canada. Actually, let's see if we can put in Vancouver. I don't think it's going to give me that. I got to go the whole country, which is crazy. Oh, kind of interesting. Kind of neck and neck in Canada. So you get different results depending on where you are in the world. Let's check not the past 12 months. Let's just check the past 90 days. Again, it's like all over the map and it's pretty neck and neck. But let's see what LinkedIn has to say. We'll go fund, raise, and let's do Vancouver, British Columbia. There we are. And that has 368 results. Let's check fundraiser and do the search again. That is 29 results. So you're going to get different results depending on your locale. So that's why you have to research by your locale to see what's getting the hits. If you want to be found with particular words on, on LinkedIn, they say, when in Rome, do as the Romans. When in LinkedIn, do as the LinkedInians, but do it for whatever is in your particular area. Now I'm going to go to the featured section. So anytime you put new content out, you want to put stuff in the featured section of LinkedIn. And I'm looking at the time and this hour is just 
fleeting by. So here's my featured section and I change my weekly video out every weekend. I change my article out every weekend and then I change my monthly recap of events out at the end of every month or a beginning of another month. You want to put a newsletter out. We already talked about that. It's better to put the newsletter out where you have more followers. There's certain buzzwords you shouldn't be using on LinkedIn. And there's a HubSpot article that I've linked here. There's more information on posting and publishing on LinkedIn. And you definitely want to turn creator mode on to add a URL. So what does that mean? Let me go up to the top here. So creator mode is right under this resources. It says creator mode. I've turned it on. So what it's going to ask me for are five hashtags of what I would post when I'm posting on LinkedIn. I've made one of my hashtag great careers PHL. And so that is my custom branded hashtag. Now, what that allowed me to do was to put a link here. So instead of putting my website link, I put my Linktree link. Now, this is free from Linktree and even the background and the colors and whatnot. So I just can't get any analytics with this because it's a free account for me personally. But the beautiful thing about being a 501c3 nonprofit is Linktree gives you a free Linktree account with analytics for life. So I put a link tree to the nonprofit in this very first section. And you could see this one's a little bit snazzier and I have different backgrounds and I could choose colors and I could put my hex colors in. And then when I actually log in, I can get analytics. So the benefit to putting this creator mode on is that you can put a link um, to your website or your link of links, like a link tree or their equivalent on your LinkedIn profile. Hey, Lynn, I've got a question actually coming in from the chat sure. here. Yeah. So the question comes from Jennifer, who says, is it okay to put on LinkedIn the open to work on your profile picture and the open to under it? What are the positives and negatives of <clears throat> using that feature? If you are a job seeker, there are different schools of thought. Some people say, hey, it's okay. Tell people you're looking for work. Other people will think, oh, makes you look desperate. Now, if you are employed and you're looking for work, you need to do it on the slide. So there's no way, no how you're going to wear the green scarf. So there are other tactics that you can do as an employed person by putting the hashtag open to work and the hashtag ONO down in a previous job. So that way it's still searchable and findable on your profile, but you're not letting the cat out of the bag that it's time to do the great reshuffle and leave what you're doing now to move on to something else. It's a personal choice and there's no right or wrong. It's whatever you want to do and it depends. Hope that answered your question. Number two, you want, or 22. You want to create a profile video. You can only do that on your mobile app and upload it. And it should be like 29 seconds so that it uploads properly. I found out I couldn't even make it 30 seconds. I had to do 29 because somehow or another, I don't know, it takes that extra second. And I had to do a lot of takes on that. Mm. And then here's a link to an article about hashtags. You want to absolutely engage on other people's content. And instead of just clicking, which I do an awful lot because I have good intentions of going back in my feed and commenting, but I don't always have that kind of time. But anytime you can make comments of at least five words or more on somebody's profile, that will really serve you well. And especially if you're looking to find a volunteer or somebody in corporate social responsibility or fundraising or whatever, board of directors, if there's somebody that admire, you can target them in a different sort of way and just engage on their content. Here's a link to a LinkedIn SWOT analysis. This is pretty comprehensive. I actually probably need to update this now because there's a lot of articles that I've written since then. And then here's your social selling index. 
You want to see how are you doing on LinkedIn? This is your report card. It shows that I'm in the top 1% of the SSI ranking. I'm in the top 1% of my network and I have over 15,000 people and I have an 80. That's my current score. I think I used to 83. So it's not that far off considering. Karen, you've got great SEO for that link. When I Googled it, your article yep. came up number one. Woo! All right. This purple line, this is if you have this sales navigator, which is like $99 or something a month. And I don't have sales navigator. I've never had it. So I only have a 15.08 out of 25. So I will not get that 100% until I get sales navigator. So it's, but I am at 20. 25 for establishing my profession. Yay. And I'm at 25 out of 25 in building relationships. A yay again. But engaging with insights because I'm moving next month and I'm working on my doctoral dissertation. I'm doing my grandma thing and babysitting my grandson once a week. I, and I'm out presenting and I run a nonprofit and I run a for profit. I'm a little busy. So I don't have time to engage on other people's posts as much as I'd like to. So that's why I don't have the engaging with insights. Okay. And then here's something that came out a couple months ago, LinkedIn best practices. So go ahead and click on these links and keep learning more. All right. Now this is only slide three. So you can tell that by the time we're looking at time here, I'm going to be flying through the rest of these, just given a brief overview but hopefully you can keep on learning and absorbing more information at a rate and pace that suits you. So company page, highly recommend it. If you are a nonprofit, make sure you have a company page for your nonprofit. And here are different steps that you can go through. This is what you need to have to get ready to build your company page. Then go into Canva and get your logo and your banner together for your company page. Then get some hashtags together for your company page and make sure you build your own branded hashtag so that not only you, but others can use that hashtag when they post different things from your event or something that happened, what impact that you've had in your community. Other resource links here is the step-by-step -step instructions on how to build a company page. And I've got visuals in the step-by-step -step instructions. But I have to warn you that the lady that I built this for, she had a for-profit website and a for-profit LinkedIn company page. And she decided to kill them both and change it to a nonprofit. So she set up a nonprofit for called Racial Equity Initiative. And so I built that company page for her and then she disconnected it from her profile. I don't know why, but it is, does have the step-by-step -step instructions in here. All right. So we've already talked in depth, pretty much rapid fire on your personal profile, on your LinkedIn company page, you want to grow your followers. Some people only have a hundred invitations per month because it hasn't been rolled out by LinkedIn everywhere. And other people have 250 and it resets every month. So if you, it's use it or lose it, just remember those vacation policies you had. So it's the same thing with these LinkedIn invitations. This is a great way for you to grow your followers. Okay. So you can add the icon to your website or to get people to go to your company page. Or you can add the icon to the, your email signature. And by the way, you can create a free email signature in Canva. This one was done with my signature by .io a long time ago when it was free. Now they have a fee. So I fortunately got my, my email signature for free when it was available to me. But check out canva.com. They have some pretty cool stuff. You want to post content one, maybe two times a day, maybe three times a week. So here are some ideas on the kind of content that you can post. 
hear more ideas, create polls, create carousel. So what's a carousel? So let me show you what that looks like. When I go to home and I could post a photo, a video, a job, write an article, or if I click on the post, there's actually more that you don't see. And it's right down here with these little icons. But for what I want to show you right now, actually, no, I do want to go to these little icons. So I want to go to the briefcase. Uh, no, I don't. I want to go to the this little page thing. So if I were to choose a file here, this is where I would upload a PDF. And the PDF is going to be a document. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to go to my last document post-it. And you can go to my profile or anybody else's profile. And if you scroll down to activity, down at the bottom of show all activity, you can see different things. So here's all my activity where I've liked or commented or my own post. Here are all my articles. So there's lots of really good things in here that you may glean from. Here are my posts. So these are just posts. This is my stuff. So here I was advertising TechSoup. And now here's my documents. So I did a document that was about what is allyship. Okay. In honor, it is Pride Month. So you're going to see that this has a little arrow to the right, how to be a workplace ally. And it's just a slide deck, so to speak. But I made this in Canva. All right. And the cool thing is when you look at it in on, on a mobile device, you can see how some of the parts of this come together. So here's the left part of the arrow, sorry, the right part of the arrow. And then here's the left part of the arrow. So what I did is I used a couple different software platforms to create this. I used Canva to create the images and then I used an to break it apart. So let me show you where that is. It's right here. How to create seamless carousels on social media and be a workplace ally. So if you click on this, you will see a link here. I used, I forget what it's called. I have to look it up. Pine tools or splitter image. So what I did is I made this big old long thing. So here's one of my images. I did squares for Instagram. And then the one that I just showed you is down below. So it's more portrait style. So you make this big old long thing and then you use this splitter or the pine tools in order to chop it up into little bits. So you can see this little rainbow right here and the sun here and the star here. It goes between two different decks. So I never done that before. And I stepped out of my comfort zone and I had fun with it. So hope you get a chance to do something cool like that too. All right. You want to tag people in profiles when you're, I mean, you want to tag a board member or a speaker or something like that, definitely use three to five hashtags, but no more than nine so that you're not hashtag stuffing. If you want to add emojis, icons, symbols to LinkedIn, we've already talked about Unicode, but I like this platform called emojipedia.org and they have a whole bunch of different emojis. And when I send out my weekly MailChimp newsletter, I always use an emoji in the subject line uh, so that it differentiates me from all the words so that there's some smiley face or nerd face or heart or something like that. Now, how do you set up your social media for your nonprofit? We use Google Docs and it's really simple. We have three columns. One column is the date we're going to post it. The second column is the content we're going to post with the hashtags. And then the third column is the link for the Canva of we can download the, the image and then post it. So we use Hootsuite. We get a discount from Hootsuite as a 501c3 nonprofit. 
But if you have a zero budget, I don't know what TechSoup has, but Buffer, you can do three accounts, I think, for free. And we just do a month at a time of social media. We spend a couple hours and plan out all the social media for the month with all our events and with the images and the holidays. We put in and celebrate everybody's holidays that we try to be all inclusive. And maybe somebody won't be following that hashtag and that maybe brings us new followers. So that's why we're also educating people of different faiths about different holidays and what the meanings are be behind it or U.S. holidays for somebody in the U.K. We do what we can. We don't have money to do everybody and everything, but we, I think we do a pretty good job. Now, here's some content suggestion tools to get engagement going on your platform. You want to cross promote any other events that other people have. So for example, here I am speaking for TechSoup. So that went on my platform. So I've got, well, I recognize some names of, the, of people who are in this audience from my area and they heard about this from me. Now, you could also review analytics on your LinkedIn company page, which is really terrific. And you're going to want to search, research what your competition, so to speak, is doing in the nonprofit world. Here's a whole bunch of different resources for company pages. And number eight is LinkedIn company page updates, Q222. Guess what? That happened this morning. This person put, did this at seven o'clock on this morning. I rolled out of bed to specifically watch what the company updates were. So she already posted it on YouTube and I was able to post it right here. Now, the biggest thing is a Boolean search. So if you want to find volunteers, board members, employee, corporate social responsibility, people, fundraisers, whatever it may be, just Boolean search. You can look for people on LinkedIn or you can look for people on Google for LinkedIn. So Michelle Raymond is in New Zealand and she wrote a book with Lynair Johnson, who's in Australia. And this is the book that talks about LinkedIn company pages. So I've referenced Michelle in the previous slide, a couple of the links. She's just fabulous. If you follow her with good trading company, you will learn an awful lot about company pages. She's the queen. Now, here's a whole bunch of nonprofit resources. You're just going to click on these links and this will take you here, there, and everywhere. And here is some metrics on LinkedIn for nonprofits. There's over 12 million nonprofit organizations and LinkedIn gets involved in hires of nonprofit people. And my last slide, here we are at 401. I'm sorry, I'm a minute over. And this is my commercial <laughs> and how to get a hold of me. I write every week for my blogs. And then if this very last one over here on the right is upcoming speaking topics and events, this is where I'm speaking on the left and then our nonprofit events on the right and my other emails and phone number. This is a Google phone number, by the way, and book a call and social media. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Happy to answer any questions. Boom. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Boom. Like, super duper helpful. So much in there. All of us have. Tremendous amounts of homework to go through to start tweaking and keywording and using the approaches you've taken. And don't worry, friends, the link to the slides and all these other key links is in the chat right now. You can certainly circle back and get some of this core material. We'll also, of course, circle back with this video after the fact as well. And I'll email all of that to you likely before the day is done. So that's the next steps for us, but let's go and take a quick look at some of the questions. We've got a question here from Ben. Do you want to pop on mic? Yeah, I just get my audio and video running here and I, and I pinned it a few times because I was curious, Lynn, about people paying for LinkedIn premium and those services because I've done it in the past with, with all the stuff that you presented today. It's almost kind of like organic versus paid reach on Facebook. It seems like a lot of the tools you've given us and you can elaborate a bit more are those that free stuff. And I yeah. understand big company like LinkedIn, LinkedIn, excuse me, has got to make money, obviously. But when you see what they're offering sometimes with some of the stuff for premium, I'm like, why would I spend 40 bucks a month? 
You don't need to do that. I spend $59.95 or whatever a month that turns out to $63. But you know what? I make my living on LinkedIn and I appreciate LinkedIn so I can make my living. And the other thing is when I go on LinkedIn, yeah. I can actually go on the jobs tab and let's say there was, there's, I don't know, let me pull up the uh, executive director. So this right. may or may not have those keywords in here and only I can see, yeah, look at that top skills. So that's something that I can see with a premium account, but if you are on tight budgets or no budgets. And I get that concept. I run lean. Don't pay for it. You have to know why you're going to pay for something. Exactly. I need this yeah, information for question. my job seekers. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Appreciate that. Awesome. And for others, definitely throw your questions into the chat and we'll be happy to read those out on your behalf. I've got a question here about like live streaming video. When I got creator mode, I suddenly had the ability to live stream video and have been quite sure what's the right approach there do you think it's long form short form what would you recommend people start exploring with i'm not exactly 100 percent sure i understand your question so i'm going to talk about video in a couple different ways to sunday here Go for it. so this little video right here this is like a profile video and that you have to create on your phone and then upload it and it's only 30 seconds. It's a little 30 second commercial. And then you can see next, I'm thinking about it because I didn't mention this. Right here is your name pronunciation. Hey, why the heck not do a little commercial after you say your name? That's something you have to do on mobile also. But for videos, you can see that I've got this video here and this video here in my featured section. I make those in Canva and I add music to it to make it a little bit more fun. And anytime I can post a video that's native um, versus taking it to YouTube or Vimeo, that works much better with the algorithm on LinkedIn than sending people off to YouTube or Vimeo. LinkedIn likes people to stay on the platform longer. So although I do put these on our YouTube channel, you definitely want to upload native video. So these are just MP4 files. So when you upload video, you also have to have a thumbnail. So that's just like a standard PNG. So even though I have this video here, I actually have a PNG photo of the first slide of this guy in the tie and the computer uploaded. Now, you know, if you get longer videos, I think, I don't know, I think LinkedIn maybe goes 15 minutes or something. I don't really know. Yeah. Yeah. There's also um, LinkedIn lives and I, uh, I have enough on my plate right now <laughs> to like finish my doctoral dissertation. I have, I've been on LinkedIn lives and I'm actually scheduled for a LinkedIn live in August with Kenneth Lang, but, and I've been on podcasts, I've been on summits, but for me to want to set up restream or stream yard or equivalent and do all that, or do LinkedIn audio, I'm just not ready to commit to that yet. I do a weekly clubhouse room every Friday at 11 AM Eastern time. And I do have people come from around the world and I'm toning down in, in July because I'm moving. And that's really all I want to take on right now because we run an awful lot of events a month and it, it takes a lot of planning and organizing and detail oriented stuff. But do you have any other questions about video? No, that I, I think that, sort of that's cover? great. Uh, but yeah, I think that's an interesting idea to, to take your video and instead of just throwing it up onto YouTube, trying to like potentially clip it into smaller pieces and then get that as native length video within LinkedIn yeah. itself. Um, it, okay. I'm so I, it myself uh, I, this webinar, I might cut it into some pieces. I took a content marketing analytics certificate course at Penn State. And my professor said he worked for a billion dollar company and he was the VP of marketing. And he told me, he says, the magic number that we have found on the length of the video is no more than 118 seconds. So people will give you just up to two minutes of their time 
And then they have to really want to know what it is that you do and what you've got to say. So if you can keep stuff to a minute and a half, that's even better. So that's why I not only upload the video to my personal profile and put it in my featured section, but I also upload it to our company page. Super helpful. So I know we're over and I, people have had to drop off. So let me bring this to a wrap to say, first of all, so jam packed with useful information. So actionable. Thank you so much, Lynn, really grateful for your contributions to everyone. Jump into the chat, click those links, follow Lynn, make sure you're getting a regular drip of this goodness into your, your feed.